Coliseum. Pixar fans who are blind or visually impaired in the United States are in for a treat. That's because Disney has found a way for them to enjoy Finding Dory. Differently abled filmgoers can bring an iPhone or iPad in earbuds and use the Disney Movies Anywhere app. The app will listen to the theater's audio and insert narration in between dialogues for them. The service is designed for people who can't always track the action visually. I miss them. Now this movie, Finding Dory, just as the one before it, Finding Nemo, will surely inspire more love for aquarium fish. But this isn't always good for our fish friends. And to tell us why, we have with us now Greg Yan, Best Alternatives campaign founder. Good evening, Greg. Good to have you back. Good evening, Mitzi, now, and good evening to all our viewers tonight. With another hat, usually you're here with WWF. Yeah, yeah, but for tonight, I'm wearing a different one yes. for the Best Alternatives campaign. Exactly. Now, tell us about this. Let's talk first about this study that when um, Finding Nemo came out in 2003, apparently clownfish populations plummeted by as much as 75% in some areas. Why? That's true. It's called the Nemo effect. And we saw it before when the Ninja Turtle movies came out. Everyone wanted to keep... Uh, a red-eared slider or a turtle. Yeah. And when Finding Nemo came out in 2003, global clownfish sales skyrocketed by up to 40%. And this might have been a cute thing, yeah. lots of clownfish and living rooms, but it translated to many reefs, all of a sudden not having Nemo yeah. and Marlin and all the happily dancing orange fish. So they were taken out of their homes and you expect the same now with Finding Dory. That's right. That's so if it happened in 2003, it can happen again. The difference is that Nemo is a clownfish. There are 30 kinds and they can actually be bred in captivity. So one in four clownfish are now bred in okay. Europe, in Japan, and many other places. But Dory is a blue tang or a regal tang. Mm -hmm. And try as we might, we haven't yet uh, develop the technology to be able to breed and raise the little dories there she on a commercial is. Beautiful scale. fish, yeah. Beautiful fish. It's super beautiful. So that's a, why you have a Defend Dory campaign. Yeah, yeah. So we came up with the Defend Dory campaign, which asks people to change their profile pics to Defend Dory. All you have to do is to go on Facebook and just type hashtag Defend Dory, that's one word, and you'll see all the various uh, iterations of the profile pics which you can change uh, your yeah. own to to show that you support having Dory out in the sea where she belongs instead of in an aquarium where she probably won't live a long and happy life. Yeah. So what can people do aside from uh, lending support online? What should we do then? All right. So there are many solutions. Number one, and this is very clear for in the two movies, the, the message is that yeah. people should actually see Nemo and Dory out in the sea yes. where they belong. And we're in the Philippines. It's the best diving spot in the world. If you must yeah. keep fish, you can keep freshwater fish. Easier and they're farmed. But if you must keep marine aquarium fish, study it first before you make that purchase. Because saltwater fish aren't like flowers. You put them in an aquarium, they're hard they die. To yeah. Yeah. These are living beings. And so when we buy them, we have a God-given duty to keep them alive. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Defend Dory campaign is all about. And we uh, hope that the movement snowballs even further. It's, it's now moving both here in the Philippines and in other countries like the United States. Yeah. And we hope that we can uh, make sure that Dory keeps on, just keeps on swimming. So what happens? I mean, how are the stocks now? If this is not done, what's going to happen to these fish stocks? All right. The thing is, the marine aquarium trade is a major, major industry. In the Philippines, it's the world's largest exporter of marine aquarium wow. fish. Most Pinoys don't know this because what we know of saltwater fish would be what we see in Cartimar. Yeah. And that is just a small portion of how big this industry really is. Very big, yeah. So Risky, if, we, yeah. if we don't do anything about it, a lot of these fish will be wiped out. I want to talk about a fish called the Bangay cardinal fish. It's a beautiful fish found in Indonesia, and then we rediscovered it 20 years ago. 20 years ago, there were 20 million Bangay cardinal fish. And every year, we kept catching and catching and catching them until this year, right now. There are only about 1.4 million of them left. Mm -hmm. So if we don't do anything about it, there will be no more Bangay cardinal fish. There might not be any dories, 
for the yeah. most left. Our fishes, our yeah, stocks are dwindled as they are now. Mm -hmm. As people go out to watch Finding Dory, what is your message? What is the message you want them to take away? All right, so for all the viewers of the awesome movie, Finding Dory, please, please remember to keep Dory in the sea, keep her swimming where she belongs. Keep her home. And yeah, with our social media accounts, we can do so much good for fish. So remember to change your profile pics and use the hashtag Defend Dory. You can check it out okay. uh, on Facebook. And we have a special hand movement for it. So if you want to take a picture of yourself, <laughs> you can Defend Dory. All right, it's the D. This is a, D. when you watch the movie, keep that in mind. Thank yeah. you very much, Greg Yan. Uh, best Alternatives campaigner. Thank you very much, Mitzi. Have a good weekend. And that's the newsroom for you this week, uh, this week, this evening. I'm Mitzi Borromeo. Thank you for watching. Good night. Have a great weekend. I'm thinking of the weekend already. Let's watch.